In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Spring Joint 2D. So let's go ahead and, well, we'll fling this box around a bit more. <laughs> Poor box. So I'm going to go ahead, select it. It already has a rigid body 2D on it, and I've done nothing with it just to make sure it's a default. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. Then when I add my spring joint, make sure you grab the 2D. It'll automatically add that rigid body for me, and I'll get all the default settings. So I have a box glider. Again, just the default settings for it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spring joint 2D. So by default, it's not connected to anything. And because of that, the connected anchor is set to zero, zero, which is in world space right where my camera is. If I were to go ahead and select that camera, and we can see at X and Y, it is zero, zero. That's why it goes there. Now I can go ahead and auto configure connected, which is gonna go ahead and put it right in the center of the box, which is just where the pivot point is. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the hand so we can see it a bit better. And just like the other joints that have the ability to connect, which I believe is all of them, you have a circle inside and a circle outside. The circle inside refers to the connected anchor and the circle on the outside is the actual anchor. So let's go ahead and play around with this a bit. I'm gonna go and move the connected anchor up a bit. Let's just zoom out a bit and let's go I'm actually going to move it, I don't know, up here. And I'm also going to move the box. Let's move the box up a little bit as well. And let's just start and see what's happening. I'll zoom out. So the box is just bouncing around. I can run into it. I can interact with it. It's like a, well, it's like a spring, just like it said it is. Now, if I go ahead and swing this around, let's see if I can. There's compression along the joint here. So we see it down here, this little green line. Let me zoom in. And up here. It's going to constantly try to reach these positions. So at one end, we're going to have this point at this line. And as this stretches out, it's going to constantly try to snap back to that line. Likewise, if it compresses in too far, it's going to snap back out to that line as well. So if you did manage to flip it all the way around, uh, it's going to be very hard to get it to compress completely on itself, at least with the default settings. But you can still make some sort of dodgeball game, I guess. <laughs> or tether ball, sorry. All right, we'll go ahead. We'll stop that. Let's look at some of the options here. So as I said, anchor is just where this point is. And it's basically going to be where it rotates or connects to your game object that has the spring joint on it. And the connected anchor at this point is just where it connects to in world space. Now the next toggle, auto configure distance, refers to these two green lines that I talked about. Right here, let me zoom out and up at the top. We can go ahead, turn that off and we can shorten that distance. And of course, if we start it back up, it's gonna to try to snap up a bit. And we'll go ahead, we'll turn that off. And the next property we're gonna look at is the dampening ratio. This is basically how fast it snaps around. You can go from anywhere from zero to one, one meaning that it moves really slow and zero meaning no dampening at all. So let's go move this down to something like 0.1. Well, here, let's just go one for the extreme. And I'm starting with it pulled down a bit. So if we let it go now, it's much slower. Let's go actually pull it. So I'll pull it down. And that's how fast it moves at one. If we go back to say like 0.1, we'll start this up. I guess I didn't actually have to stop it, but notice how much springier that is, how much faster it tries to move towards here. Now with frequency, the higher you have it, the stronger the spring action is. So if we go ahead and put this to 0.1, hit play, we can see it just stretching all the way down. It's a very weak spring. Let's go ahead and snap this up to, oh, see, it did come back up, but away it goes again. <laughs> if we were to go ahead and let's put this to one, boom, there we go. 0.5, let's slow it down a bit. That's not bad. Now let's go to 100 and pull it down. 
and it's much faster. And I believe this goes up to a million or something like that. It goes up really high. You can check the docks. They'll tell you. I think I have to stop to actually get it. So yeah, it looks like a million. I'm not going to count the zeros. I'll leave that up to you. So if you want a really sharp, crisp action, go ahead and play with the frequency. I'm going to try two for now. Then, of course, we have brake force, which is if there's enough force applied to the box, it will break. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and move it up a bit. Not much. I want to adjust the distance. Let's bring that down to about here. A little bit more about there. I'm just going to set the brake force super low. 20. I'll start it up. It'll start bouncing. Oops, that was enough to actually break it right there. Let's go ahead and we'll crease that a bit. Not really sure what the magic number is for how strong this is. That's apparently too weak as well. Try 100. Well, 100's too, too little. There we go, 1,000. I think it might be because I have the frequency up higher. Well, again, season to taste. I'm going to have to play around with this a bit just to see. So let's jump on it and try to break it. Well, let's try to stay on it. <laughs> Whoa. So a thousand is too big for just my weight to break it, but you get the idea. The lower the force, the less it takes to break it. I guess the lower the break force setting. I do want to be able to break it jumping on it though. I've got an idea for having something like this in my game. So I'll have to go ahead and play around with it. Now, I'm going to shrink this down a bit. I just want this to be infinity. Again, type INF to go to infinity. Frequency, I'm going to set back to zero. Um, distance, let's bring this down a bit more. I'm going to say uh, three should do it. And I want to go ahead and first we'll look at with enable collision turned off. And we take a note here. It actually goes through this box collider. There's no rigid body on this collider. It's just a box collider for the platform. And just like with the other hinge joints that we looked at, at least in Unity 5.5, if we go ahead and enable collider or enable collision, it will actually collide with the other colliders. And I don't think this is a bug or anything else. I think it's just in the description. If we hover it over it, uh, should the rigid body connect with this joint collide or the rigid body it's connected to, should it collide with it? So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and let's actually go ahead and child it to something now. So for connecting rigid body, let's go ahead and attach it to this one here. So I'm going to grab the red arm. It has a rigid body on it. I'll go ahead, drag and drop that in here. And I do not have auto configured set and it just went off into a funky spot because of the placement. I'm just going to click auto configure, which moves them both down to the center again. Turn it off, and then remember the anchor is the local, and connected is where you want to connect it to, either world space or it's offset on the rigid body you're connecting to. So I'm going to go ahead and set the connected to zero, zero as well, which will put it right in the center. If I go ahead and start this, behavior wise, it's the same. Uh, take note though that enabled collision is turned off, and it does collide with the box collider around my platform. Now, it's a platform itself, so I should be able to knock it up through there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to demonstrate this part, but with it un... <laughs> That's so weird watching it go up through the bottom. But with it, uh, the way it's set up with it unselected, it can still bounce through that. I'm probably going to have to just make it start above it. Whoops, I got it in play mode. Let's go ahead, we'll turn it off. I'm going to start it above this rigid body. And when we hit play, it'll fall right through. Well, we'll have to shorten that distance a bit. That's fine. I'm even going to put it shorter at 0.5. Let's actually move it a little bit closer so it doesn't spring so much. And there we go. It falls right through. And it just keeps bouncing through. If we go ahead and enable collision, it'll no longer do that. There we go. 
I'm sure there's some sort of game here. Big money. <laughs> now, also keep in mind that since it's being controlled through physics, the joints are physics based. We go ahead and make this longer. Uh, let's say, let's go back to that three distance and move it over here a bit so it falls through. Oh, it's going to wrap right around there. Uh, I'll have to figure out some way to get it out. There we go. <laughs> but anyway, since it's um, controlled by physics, we can actually come up here and change some of the stuff. You know, like give it a drag. Let's give it a three drag. And now it stops swinging so much because there's so much drag attached to it. We'll go ahead, switch that back. And that's pretty much it for your Spring Joint 2D. You've got everything you need to get it working. And I think it could actually make for quite a fun platformer game to have actual springy platforms. You got to jump from one to one. So I can't wait to see what you come up with with the Spring Joint 2D. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>